the trio. Anyway, last week, Beth and I, we had a wonderful opportunity just to be with friends over in Glen Arbor. Uh, and when we get together, we, we, a couple of us play guitars and everybody sings uh, songs that, you know, Crosby Stills stuff and Cat Stevens, that genre of music. And, and uh, it's a wonderful time. And, and actually, we did, while we were there, we went to a kind of a wine coffee house kind of like place and listened to someone else um, perform who was terrific. And again, in that acoustic genre. And so it was a wonderful time. And when I finally sat down Monday morning to read these texts, for some reason, it sprung into my mind, the, uh, the Kingston Trio came into my mind for some reason. Remember the Kingston Trio? I mean, they were big, particularly if you go say the early 50s through the mid 60s, that original unit was amazing. You remember the song Tom Dooley? Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. Bum, 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 bum. Anyway, and that was a big song. You figure like in the 50s, over three million copies were sold. And the world was a much smaller place then. That, those were big numbers, but anyway, I'm coming out of this acoustic singing thing, and I'm reading these lessons, and I said, oh, we have a kingdom trio that's right in front of our very eyes. We've got three key, key players in our uh, faith story that do sing a message, and the message is fairly similar. And if we imagine the three, uh, we can imagine the harmonies that they might make and the message that they have been delivering for all these years, of course, we start with Amos. He's the first one in. And Amos, of course, is a, I call him a, a middle level agro capitalist in uh, Judah back in the day. He's called by God to uh, preach and prophesy to the upper kingdom, to Israel, because God is really, really, really unhappy with how Israel has created its poverty and how it treats the poor. God is not happy. And God is going to make it clear through the ministry of Amos that this cannot continue. The way you treat people is not a sustainable way to move forward. And of course, uh, uh, you know, the kingdom is overtaken, right, by another empire. And, and Amos uh, is given that message, and he delivers that message very powerfully, and, it, and he's afraid to do it. He comes from a different land. He's going to a different place, and he's delivering this message uh, without real c credentials, other than the fact that God wants him to deliver this message. You must, you must, you must, as a society, treat my people well. And when you, as a society, create the problems that are there, it is greatly angering and disappointing to me. And I feel no compunction to support you. Well, that's Amos, part of the, part of the kingdom trio. And then we get to John the Baptist. John the Baptist, very similar message in truth. John, who is a um, cousin of Jesus, has a powerful voice right in about the same area. John is really preaching to, particularly to the wealthy. He's positioned on the Jordan River, not all that far from Jerusalem. 
And he's preaching to everyone, but he's really trying to encourage people to repent, to turn from their sin, to remember the great shalom, and to love their brothers and their sisters, and to become one. This is what John is delivering, and it's a message that people don't want to hear. It's a message that nobody wanted to hear 500 years before Amos. Luckily for Amos, he is able to at least go back down south and retire in Judah. He doesn't lose his life. But that's certainly not the case for John the Baptist. He does lose his life over this. People who have plenty are not comfortable with this message one way or the other. Because something must have to give. And we see with Herod, with Herod, the struggle that he has. He arrests John the Baptist because his wife wanted to arrest John the Baptist because John the Baptist called him out. His wife is, you know, whatever. And, but Herod is perplexed. He, he hears the message of John. And deep, 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 deep down, he knows John's right. He knows he's right. It struck a chord with Herod. The problem with Herod is he has much to lose, ultimately, if he follows John. And we can say all he had to lose was the love of his life, but the wife, but there was more to it in that drama. He had the power to do some things, and he didn't because he was afraid. He was afraid to give up the trappings of power. He was afraid to say, no, you're not going to get John the Baptist's head on a platter. That's ridiculous. He couldn't do it. Pride, power, wealth. If I follow this guy, my life is going to change. And John Baptist dies, right? But now we bring in the third member of this trio. We bring in Jesus of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. We bring in Jesus who has paid attention all of his adult life to John the Baptist. John was a rock star. Jesus paid attention. He learned something about ministry from John the Baptist. And as Jesus is baptized and he moves forward with his ministry, we see evidence of John's people pulling away and starting to follow Jesus. The recognition that the torch has been passed. And this is before John loses his life. But finally, he does lose his life and all of his, or most of his disciples, begin to follow Jesus. The message was similar. Jesus preached the great shalom. God's people are to be made whole. The organized structure of Palestine needs to be adjusted so this can happen. We've allowed it. We have allowed it to take place for hundreds of years, forever. And Jesus would say to someone who wants to argue this point, don't you dare say that I said you'll have the poor with you forever as a justification for poverty. Because if you say that, you really don't know me. The only reason I said it is because that's the darn problem we have in humanity. It doesn't seem to be correcting itself. It's not something that I co commend or accept. It's the challenge that we have in the world of faith to make these corrections. And Jesus would say, to whom much is given, much is expected. I expect much from those who are given much. These guys, this kingdom trio, they stir stuff up. 
They stir up a little bit of good trouble. They get people thinking, and it makes people uncomfortable. Two of them are martyred. One gets out of Dodge. But in any event, the message that these guys are delivering and the songs that they are singing are songs that attempt to mobilize their followers to fill the great shalom. To love the neighbor as you love yourself. To get focused on this effort. And so, here we are with <laughs> the Kingdom Trio. Now, by rights, we have, a, we have the right to join the band. We, we, are, we are disciples of Christ. We can be part of that trio. We can either add our voice, could be a quartet, or we could play instruments. We could join one way or another to help promote this message of God's hope for humanity and to shake things up enough that says it's not only individual, Jesus never said it. Well, it's also collective. The band needs to play loud, particularly this year. This is a year where people are reflecting on where do we go from here? What does it mean? to be a citizen, what does it mean to be a citizen of the kingdom of God in the midst of the world we live? Do I put God first, second, third, and fourth before I entertain other dialogue? Because if I do, a certain kind of spiritual wisdom will pop and I'll see the world in a new way. The Kingdom Trio would have stand, stood up for the oppressed. They would have stood up for, uh, against poverty. They would say, don't make any excuses for it. Dig deep and learn. The Kingdom Trio would say, don't give in to fear. I know it's tough, particularly when you have something to lose, but yet, it can be done. Don't let anybody tell you it can't. There is a new way. It's the old way, actually. It's the way that began before the beginning. It's the way that we touch a little bit here and there, but kind of brush aside when it feels a little uncomfortable. The way is here. It always was. It always will be, no matter what happens. And the good news, I think the good news is that we, as children of God, have this opportunity to become a part of this uh, group, and we have this opportunity to engage in life in a new way and to begin to uh, exercise the uh, influence that we have to make this world a better place for our children, our grandchildren, and those who follow. And that's a good thing. It's important to remember no matter how your faith journey takes you, that God loves all people, all people, including me and you. Amen.